And so hopefully this is going live. If you can hear me and see me, please hit that like button. Um, so I have not been on the past couple days and I have a really, really, really good reason. So last week my daughter was playing, she's 12. Um, she decided to test gravity and gravity won. So basically she face planted on her face, poor kid. <laughs> she didn't have any, um, her hands, it's a long story, but she face planted. She wound up broke, breaking her nose. Um, she, so she has a fractured nose. So that is why I didn't do as many videos as I could or wanted to last week. Um, I also had a really bad migraine. It was one of those weeks that was just crazy. So we were in the doctors a lot and um, I had a really bad migraine. I get migraines a lot. And then I had to take my son to the orthopedic doctor. So, <laughs> so what I'm gonna talk about today is what happens when life happens. You know, we don't live in, um, the Biggest Loser Ranch. Um, we have lives, we have jobs, we have kids, maybe we have pets, um, fur babies, whatever. Stuff happens. So what I'm gonna talk about is how to kind of navigate that. And if you are new here, my name is Nicole Simonin. I am the personal trainer at Shape It Up Fitness. Um, I've been working since 2006 on helping women get fit and be fierce and have no limits. Um, so welcome to the live show. If you are an oldie but goodie and you've been here around Shape It Up, thank you so much for continuing to come back and watch the videos. So last week, like I said, it was um, a hodgepodge of disastrous situations. <laughs> so, um, so with my daughter's broken nose, my migraines, and my son's foot, uh, I kind of lost, you know, my flow. If you've been following me at all, I am going to be doing a fitness competition in September and I can't be messing around right now with things, you know, that don't follow suit with what I need to do to get into this competition. Granted, I, my daughter can't help if she breaks her nose, that kind of thing, and I am not blaming anyone. It was just one of those weeks that just fell apart. So, I did miss some of my workouts. I think I missed three workouts. And food was an issue because I didn't feel good. I had a really bad migraine and I was just grabbing things because we were between making phone calls to the doctors and trying to get her to the doctors and you know what we didn't know what was going on. So if you are a mom, hit that like button if you can relate if your kid is like, I mean, there was blood everywhere and it was it was it was a hot mess. So having a plan, actually having a couple plans is actually what I try to teach my clients. So having a plan A is when everything is hunky-dory and there are no issues, no problem. This is the ideal situation that you want to be in. But let's get realistic. It doesn't always work that way. You know, life has bumps and, and stuff, highlights and lowlights and all that stuff. So I, uh, plan A is your ideal situation. This is when everything is perfect. You can hit your workouts, you know, your food is going well and all that. And again, that's where you want to be most of the time. But then when stuff happens, so like last week, I pulled up my plan B and I have to tell you, I did not follow it <laughs> because I did not feel good. But your plan B is basically when those things happen. So again, my daughter broke her nose. I'm not going to be like, oh, sorry, I, I can't attend to you. You know, that's, I'm a mom. I love my daughter. And I would not leave her there, you know, and be like, oh, I got to work out or I got to go prep my food. No. So <laughs> plan B is when those type of situations come up. And I think under normal circumstances, meaning if I hadn't had a migraine and didn't, like it was a really bad migraine. It was three days long. So if you've ever had a migraine, you know you just want the pain to go away, You anything and everything. And it's not that I ate bad. It was just that I wasn't eating what I know I need to eat in order to get to this competition. So if this competition hadn't been on my radar, um, it, it, you know, it would have been just a little blip. But because I'm on a time frame, um, I want to stay focused on that. So plan B is like, okay, so what do I need to do to kind of keep going forward without falling back too far and attending to whatever it is that I need to attend to? So like some of the 
things are like maybe you're traveling or stuff like that, you can get a workout to do in the hotel. Um, you can always go to the gym at the hotel. Things that are going on, I'm sorry, uh, Facebook is flipping in and out saying my connectivity is not, is low. So hopefully this is still recording. But um, so stuff like that where you can kind of just like, so last week if I had done my plan B, I would have done a quick workout like 20 minutes while she was resting or something or while somebody was watching her. Um, food definitely would have been more on point with um, me prepping it more or making better choices. Oh, thanks, Anna. Thank you for telling me it's still recording. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so that would be plan B. So those are the times when little things come up. Then I have people. Now, this is usually when huge. There's a death in the family. You're getting sick. Maybe you're getting divorced. You know, you just lost your job. Those kind of big things. Um, I think last week with my daughter's broken nose, that could have teetered into plan C. I, you know, that was a big deal. Um, so these life altering, life changing things that are going on. And that is where you basically do the minimum that you can do and still feel like you're just kind of maintaining. So if that means skipping three workouts, then that means skipping three workouts. You can always, always, always be cognizant of what you're eating. So even if you're not hitting those workouts, you can definitely be aware of making better choices and, and the best choice that you have available to you. So say you, um, you know, say someone is in the hospital and you have to, not that you have to, but you're choosing to stay there with the person, you can always choose the healthiest version of a hospital choice. And maybe that's a McDonald's, sorry McDonald's, but maybe that's a McDonald's McNugget thing, I don't know. I, don't, I haven't been to McDonald's in... I don't know when. <laughs> I can't even remember. But if you so say you get grilled chicken or whatever. The other thing, um, and I've talked about this on other videos, is it doesn't matter really what you eat as far as like if you're in that situation, say you're stuck at, at McDonald's or Burger King, you can still get like a double Big Mac burger or whatever they're called and eat half of it and still be on par for what you need to do. So basically you're in survival mode for Plan C and you're just trying to kind of do what you can to keep your sanity and to um, make sure that you're there for your loved ones or whatever the situation may be. There are some people that need more than a plan C. Some people need a plan D, some people need a plan E. So it doesn't matter how many plans you have, but if you have that kind of in the background in your head, you can always substitute. You can always find something to do to keep you going. So again, back to the hospital situation, if you were in the hospital, now we were fortunate we weren't in the hospital. We um, got everything taken care of uh, through the doctor's offices. But if I was in the hospital situation and somebody was with her, then I could have walked up and down the hospital stairs or something like that. So um, just keep your mind open to different things. If you really want to go crazy and do walking lunges in the hallway, I don't know, that no nurses would probably look at you funny, <laughs> but those are some of the things that you can do to just keep it going. Um, we'd all love to, like I said in the beginning of this video, be at the Biggest Loser Ranch and have everything really isolated and have your food, you know, there and your workout and everything, but it's not realistic. Um, that is why most of those people that are on The Biggest Loser have gained all their weight back. I don't even, I, I think there's like a handful of people who have kept it off. Um, and unfortunately, that's the reality of it. But so this is what I do with my clients is I help them design your plan A, your plan B, your plan C. So like I have one client who is um, traveling a lot. So we give them, I give them um, travel workouts that they can do. Um, and sometimes they're in different situations. Sometimes they're in a hotel. Sometimes they are in a camper. Sometimes they are, you know, at a B and B or whatever. So um, I try to give what I can to my clients to make sure that they're getting the results that they want. All right. So my daughter is doing well. She has no pain, um, which is good, and the bruising and swelling is pretty good. She didn't have to have surgery, which is another plus. My son is doing well. Um, he has orthotics now and I am migraine free <laughs> and I am back on track. Um, that's another thing I wanted to say too. I was talking to one of my, two of my clients this morning 
So last week, um, TMI for some of you, but so last week, like I said, with everything else going on, it's that special time of the month. I weighed myself in the beginning of the week and I weighed myself, I think it was Thursday. I had gained five pounds. Now I'm five foot two and five pounds on me is a lot, is a lot. If I was six foot, it would be nothing. But those five pounds I knew were because I wasn't making the best choices of food. I wasn't working out and I wasn't drinking enough water. So once I got back to my normal pattern, getting ready for this contest, um, which technically I think was Thursday, I started tweaking my food again. And then Friday I was back to working out and doing what I needed to do. Um, I've lost the five pounds again. So I know it wasn't body fat. It was just water, could have been salt, retaining stuff, that kind of thing. So when you guys get on the scale, do not stress out about five pounds. Pounds. I know that sounds like, well, duh, Nicole, if I'm gaining five pounds, then I'm going to stress out. But there's a lot of other factors that can be involved in why that scale is going up. But come visit me over at shapeitupfitness.com. Um, you can, um, I have a new program that is coming out, and uh, you are welcome to check it out. It's a six week program. It's called Turn Your Life Around in Six. You can Request a phone call with me and I will be happy to give you more information on it and see if you're a good fit. It's not a good fit for everyone, so just keep that in mind. But you can check it out at shapeitupfitness.com slash call, C-A-L-L. And I'd love to hear from you. All right, that's all for me today. Uh, my plan is to do a video every day for the rest of July. Um, I might do it in August too, I don't know. So, but if you have an idea, go ahead and hit it in that, um, put it in the comment section down below and um, a topic I think. Again, head over to Shape It Up Fitness. And I will talk to you soon. All right, take care. Bye.